Okay. So I'm assuming that the uh, four other relation we've met probably each have one of these tails, because that's how these things work in adventure games. Hi, Saina. Hi, April. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Yes, my mommy taught me the tale of the stars. It's a really pretty story. You want me to tell it? Please, Saina, I would like that very much. Okay. This is my tale, the tale of stars, and I tell it to you in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in her words. In the small village of Jinjay Jin, near the rumbling hills of Onion, there lived a girl called Mona. She was a curious girl, and she would always get in the way of grown elation. Go play somewhere else, they would say to Mona, but she didn't want to play with the other children. She wanted to be where the grown-ups were, see what they were doing, and learn from them. But one day, after getting many complaints from the pottery makers, and guardsmen, and traders, and soldiers in the village, Mona's mother told her that she wasn't to interfere with the grown-ups anymore and that instead she could go play with the other children, or sit still and draw, or work with clay. But Mona was always curious, and now, since she wasn't to be among the grown elation anymore, she decided to go exploring the forest that lay just outside of the village of Jinjay. She had many times been forbidden to enter the forest because it could be a dangerous place, but Mona was very curious. Of course she wasn't planning on going far into the forest, but then her eye caught sight of a white fluff tail hopping through the tall grass, and Mona, curious as ever, gave chase. The fluff tail ran away into the forest, and Mona followed, blind to where she was going, and interested only in catching the white fluff tail so that she could keep it as a pet. But then, after a good while, the fluff tail disappeared into a hole in the ground leaving Mona alone in a small clearing, somewhere deep inside the forest. She was exhausted after running after the fluff tail for so long, and as she looked around at the clearing at the unfamiliar trees and flowers, she realized that she hadn't been paying attention to where she was going. Not for the first time, her curiosity had gotten the better of her, but this time it was serious. Mona was too young to fly, and she had very little sense of direction, and chasing the white fluff tail had made her dizzy and tired. It was getting darker, and Mona was all alone in the deep, dangerous forest, too sleepy and too scared to be able to go anywhere. Mona curled up with her wings wrapped around her under the leaves of a tree, and began crying. Soon it got really dark, and somewhere, not far away, wolves started howling at the moon. Mona was so scared, she was petrified. But after a while, her exhaustion got the better of her. And she fell asleep. She woke up when she heard a voice calling her from somewhere far above. Looking up at the starry sky, Mona saw a vision of the spirits of five tellers gazing down at her. You have let your curiosity leave you astray, said one. You are lost, and you deserve to be lost, said another. Poor little girl, said a third. We will help you home, said a fourth. But remember this, said the fifth spirit. We will lead you back to your village and to your mother only if you promise us one thing. I promise, said Mona. Whatever it is, I promise I will do it. Very well, said the first spirit. You will make the story of this night into your own tale, and you will call it the Tale of Stars. It will be a tale to warn the curious to be careful, continued the third spirit, and to not let their curiosity get the better of them. And, said the second spirit, to remind the elation that the spirits of their tellers watch out for them when they most need it. And so the spirits of the five tellers guided Mona through the forest, and by dawn she was home. And Mona did tell her tale, the tale of stars, to everyone in the village, so that everyone would remember that the curious must be cautious, and that the spirits of the tellers are always watching.
This was my tale, the tale of stars, and I told it in my own words as my teacher did to me. That was a beautiful tale, Saina. Thank you. Goodbye, Saina. You're leaving again? I wish you could stay. Me too, Saina, believe me. Okay, one tail down and three to go. Let's talk to the older guy. Do you know one of the four tales of winds, stars, sea, and homecoming? Mine is the tale of sea, human. Would you mind telling it to me? I would be happy to do so. This is the tale of sea told in my own words, as it was told to me by my teacher in his words, and to him by his teacher in his words. This was a very, very long time ago, when the Alation were a strong people, and we could spend days riding the hot winds above the seas. We hunted fish then, and we were at war with the Merum. The Wet Tails. Akalis was one of the strongest warriors there was. His claws were sharp and long, his beak pointy, and his teeth strong. Akalis was admired by everyone in his clan, and because of this, he was cocky and arrogant. So one day, the teller of Akalis city asked him to perform a very important and very special duty, to bring a sacred jewel to the teller of an elation town across the sea. This particular jewel was very important because it signified a union between the two towns, and it would benefit the people of both that it was delivered safely and promptly. Akalis grinned and told the teller that he would deliver the jewel both quickly and safely and that she was not to worry. But the teller did worry because Akalis was young and too sure of himself. But she wanted to test him and to teach him that sharp claws, a pointy beak, and strong teeth are not all a warrior needs that a warrior must also be wise and careful. So Akalis set out across the sea on his flight. It was on the fourth day that he spotted something in the water that caught his attention, and forgetting his duty and following his curiosity, Akalis dived towards the water to investigate. When he came closer, he saw that there were merum in the water, Foolishly hunting close to the surface, and Akalis saw an opportunity to again prove his might. As a great warrior to his people, and to capture the fins of a few wet tails. But this time, Akalis' arrogance got the better of him, because the Merum had set a trap. As he dived towards the Merum with his claws, a spear shot up from the water to hit him. Akalis struck the water and dropped the jewel he was carrying, and it was all he could do not to drown. Akalis was bleeding, and the Merum were grabbing onto his wings and his legs, but he fought bravely, and finally he managed to escape. But even though he now lived, he was dead inside, because the shame of losing the sacred jewel would always be with him. Akalis could not return to his village because he had neglected his duty to his teller and to his people, and so he went away to a small island where he could be alone. To himself and his people, Akalis now became the lost one, he who had been on a sacred mission but had failed in his arrogance. A year passed. And one day, Akalis met with human traders from a ship that came close to his island. From the traders, Akalis heard speak of a hideous creature that lived in the sea, the Octowo. 